What's up everybody? This is Tinku Sagar and in this video we're gonna explore the concept of knowledge distillation in deep learning. What is knowledge distillation? Well, it's a compression technique used to make large deep learning models smaller, faster and more efficient. Let's just look at this graph for a while. These are all the new deep learning models in NLP and you can see the number of parameters are increasing as we progress through the timeline in x-axis. The top companies are on a constant race to big, bigger and bigger models, thus beating the state-of-the-art accuracies. So what's wrong with bigger models? Well, they need more resources to run. Inference time can be expensive, especially if you are planning to deploy these on non-GPU machines. These models will be harder to fine-tune and manage them. That's why we have this awesome concept of knowledge distillation which is used to reduce the sizes of all these models. Before we go any further, let's just look at this neural network which classifies the input image into three classes, deer, a horse and a peacock. Now look at the predicted probabilities and the actual labels of this image. Just look at these numbers and which of these actually gives more information. What does this actual probabilities tell you? Well, the input image is a deer and it is not a horse and it is not a peacock. Now, look at what the predicted probabilities tell you. I think it's a 60% chance that there is a deer, but there's also a 39% chance that it's a horse, but with only 1% chance that it's a peacock. So, this kind of is giving you more information on this input image. Why did it also give a 39 on hose? Because the structure, the body shape of a deer and a hose are kind of similar as compared to the deer and the peacock. So comparing the actual labels and the predicted probabilities of a trained neural network, we could always say that the predicted probabilities that are coming out from the neural network is having richer information than the actual one hot and got it labels. Now the concept is, what if we take these rich information and teach a new network? So let's just keep that in mind and try to understand the knowledge and distillation setup that we have right now. Typically we have a teacher and a student. A teacher model is typically a large pre-trained model or an ensemble of large pre-trained models which has been trained on lots and lots of data. And then we have the student model, which is a newly initialized small model. So what we do is we take the training data and we have the hard labels, which is basically the one hot encoded class labels. We take the training data, we feed it into both the teacher and the student. We get the predictions from both these models. Now the predictions from the teacher model, as we saw in the previous slide, has lots of valuable information. These predictions come as distilled knowledge and adds as a some component in the overall loss that we calculate for the student model. And then we calculate this loss and then back propagate this loss on the student model. Remember the teacher model is weights are frozen so we are not updating the weights in this model. We are only updating the weights in the student model. So to understand how this loss works in a little, little bit more deeper. Let's just review softmax activation function, right? So so let's just assume this is the output that is coming from the final layer and softmax activation function just takes all these values and converts them into things that we can view it as probabilities. It's just taking these numbers, raising it to the exponential and then normalizing by all other Values. This is our normal softmax function. Now, what is softmax with temperature? So we take the values inside the exponents, and then we just divide it by this parameter called t. So what happens when we do this thing? So these are the final layer logics. 0 0.5 to 1 minus 0 0.5 is same. These values are fed into this softmax with temperature. And then we get something like this. So when t equal to 1, it is as good as our softmax function. So we have 
the class with the highest value gets the highest probability and the rest of the probabilities are very low. But like when I increase t to 0 0.5, 0 0.59 got ready used and the rest of the things got increased. Less. So it's as if like the class with the highest probability, probability is reducing a little bit and the rest of the classes are increasing a little bit. So it's kind of like smoothening. So let's see how this loss is calculated, which is used to train the student model, right? So we have the logics for the student and logics for the teacher. Logics are the final layer output values, which is expressed in this form of vector. So we have V for student, Z for teacher. We take the softmax with the temperature formula and then we apply this vector on this softmax to get P and Q vectors. Once we get these values, uh, we also take the hard prediction. So hard prediction is uh, calculated only for student, which is basically you take the P vector get the highest value set it to 1 and set rest of the values to 0 so it's like looking at the class probabilities but setting the highest class to 1 and the rest of the classes set to 0 so we have the hard predictions and then we calculate two types of loss so let's look at what those losses are so loss one is based on soft targets and that is basically the cross entropy between Q and P. So these are called soft targets because they are coming through the temperature functions. We take the cross entropy between these two. So it's almost as if like this is your Q is your true probabilities and P is your predictions. So cross entropy is computed like that. Then you have the loss coming from the hard targets, which is the cross entropy between the student predictions, which are the hard predictions, and y true. Y true is the actual uh, one hot encoded class labels. So you take the hard targets and get a cross entropy over there, and then we take the final. Uh, loss as a weighted average of loss 1 and loss 2. So alpha is some weight here and we uh, take the weighted average of loss 1 and then 1 minus alpha into loss 2. So, so these are all these values like alpha, t are kind of hyperparameters which we can adjust accordingly. So once we have the loss like this we back propagate these loss into the student model and retrain the student model. So this is just if you want to review the cross entropy, this is the formula for cross entropy. It's just taking, it's always computed on a true label versus predicted label. So the true label into the log of predicted labels and then you sum it over all the sequences in each batch and then divide the whole thing by the number of samples. So I'm not going to get into the details of cross entropy. You could refer to other resources. So this is the main objective, right? So the objective of the student model will be to minimize the final discretion loss, which is the weighted sum of loss one and loss two. And this way you train this student model with under the guidance of the teacher. Why did I say under the guidance of the teacher? Because the teacher is also contributing something to the loss. It's contributing a rich probabilities which actually capture the data distributions of the input data set and then that's fed into the student model. I hope you got a basic understanding of how this works. In the next videos we will be definitely looking into deeper and understanding how these are actually implemented in different deep learning uh, models like Disturbert and MiniLM. Questions, comments are always welcome. Please put them forward in the comments box. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you and have a great day. Adios.